Aloha beautiful beings. Today we are going to be reading about the Dutch mix and planting seeds, your seeds of love and how to do that. And all the details will be revealed shortly. Chapter 10, book one, and this is about putting the seed under your tongue. Very, very potent information. It will go into that. Her beloved Dutch Nix. Anastasia enthusiastically explained to me how many new opportunities could open up for people who communicate with plants. There were two major subjects she talked about, not only with particular excitement and animation, but I would have to admit with a kind of love, namely bringing up children on the one hand and Dutch Nix on the other. And Dachniks are people in Russia that have their own land and basically like farmers, gardeners, living like a family homesteader. <laughs> According to everything she said about these people and the importance she attached to them, we would all think to literally bow on our knees before them. Just think. According to her, the Dachniks have not only managed to save the whole nation from famine, but also sown seeds of good in people's hearts and are educating the society of the future. There are far too many points to emunate and enumerate here. One would need a whole book. And Anastasia kept on arguing, trying to demonstrate this. You see, the society you are living in today can learn a lot from communication with the plants to be found around Duchess. Yes, I'm talking about the Duchess, where you personally know every individual plant in your garden plot and not those huge impersonal fields cultivated by monstrous senseless machines. People feel better when they are working in their dacha plots. Many of them end up living longer. They become kinder and it is these very jachniks that can pave the way for society to become aware of how destructive the technocratic path can be. Anastasia whether that's true or not is for the time being beside the point. What is your role in all this? What kind of help can you offer? Taking me by the arm, she led me over to the grass. We lay on our backs. The palms of our hands turn upwards. Close your eyes, let go, and try to picture yourself what I am saying. Right now, I shall take a look with my ray and locate at a distance some of those people you call Dachnik. After a period of silence, she began to say softly, an old woman is unwrapping a piece of cheesecloth with, in which cucumber seeds have been soaking. The seeds have already begun to develop quite a bit, and I can see little sprouts. Now she has picked up a seed. I have just suggested to her that she should not soak the seeds that way. They will become deformed when they are planted, and this kind of water is not good for them. The seed will go bad. She thinks herself must have guessed that, and that is partially true. I just helped her guess a bit. Now she will share her idea and tell other people about it. This little deed is done. Anastasia told how she visualizes in her consciousness all sorts of situations involving work, recreation, and people's interaction, both with one another and with plants. When the situation she has visualized comes close to reality, Contact is established, whereby she can see the person and feel what this person is suffering or sensing. She herself then, as it were, steps into the image of the person and shares her expertise with them. Anastasia said that plants react to people, to man, with love or hate, and exercise a positive or negative influence on people's health. And here is where I have an enormous amount of work to do. I keep myself busy with the dacha garden plots. The Dachniks travel out to their plots, their plantings, as though they were going to visit their own children, but unfortunately their relationship to them is still pretty much on the level of intuition. They still do not have the foundation that comes with a clear realization of the true purpose behind this relationship. Everything, but everything on the earth, every blade of grass, every little bug has been created for man. And everything has its individual appointed task to perform in the service of man, the multitude of medicinal plants are a confirmation of this. 
but people in your world know very little about how to benefit from the opportunities they are presented with. How about how to take full advantage of them? I asked Anastasia to so show some concrete examples of the benefits of conscious communication, an example that could be seen, verified in practice, and subjected to scientific investigation. Anastasia thought for a little while, then suddenly brightened and exclaimed, the Dachniks, my beloved Dachniks, they will prove it all. They will show what is true and confound all your science. Now, how is it I did not think of that or understand it before? Some kind of brand new idea made her bubble over with joy. I must say that the whole time I was with her, not once did I see Anastasia sad. She can be serious, thoughtful, and concentrated, but more often than not, delighting in something. This time, her joy literally bubbled over. She jumped up and clapped her hands, and it seemed to me as though the whole forest had become brighter and began to stir, responding to her with the rustling of treetops and the singing of birds. She whirled round and round as though she were doing some kind of dance. Then, all radiant, she once again sat down beside me and said, Now they will believe, all on account of them, my dear Dotchniks, they will explain and prove everything. Trying to bring her a little more quickly back to the topic of our interrupted conversation, I noted, not necessarily you say that every little bug has been created for man's benefit. But how can people believe that when they look with so much loathing on the cockroaches crawling over the kitchen tables? What can it be that they too have been created for our benefit? Cockroaches, declared Anastasia, will only crawl over a dirty table to collect the remains of any food particles lying about. Particles too small for the human eye to see. They process them and render them harmless, harmless before discarding them in some secluded spot. If there happen to be too many of them, simply bring a frog in the house and the surplus cockroaches will disappear at once. While well, Anastasia went on to propose the Dotchniks do will probably contradict the principles of the plant sciences and will certainly contradict the commonly accepted methods of planting and cultivating various garden plot crops. Her affirmations, however, are so colossal that it seems to me they would be worthy trying out for anyone with the opportunity to do so. Maybe not throughout their whole plot, but at least in one small section of it, especially since nothing harmful and only good could come of it. Besides, much of what she told me has already been confirmed by the experiments of the biological science expert, Mikhail Prokovich. Proko... Prokhorov. <laughs> Chapter 11, Advice from Anastasia. The Seed as Physician. Anastasia stated, Every seed you plant contains within itself an enormous amount of information about the universe. Nothing made by human hands can compare with this information, either in size or accuracy. Through the help of these data, the seed knows the exact time down to the millisecond with it is when it is to come alive, to grow, what juices it is to take from the earth, how to make use of the rays of the celestial bodies, the sun, moon, and stars, what it is to grow into, what fruit to bring forth. These fruits are designed to sustain man's life more powerfully and effectively than any manufactured drug of the present future. These fruits are capable of counteracting and withstanding any disease of the human body. But to this end, the seed must know the human condition, so that during the maturation process, it can sa satiate its fruit with the right correlation of substances to heal a specific individual of all his disease, if indeed he has it or is prone to it. In order for the seed of a cucumber, tomato, or any other plant grown in one's plot to have such information, the following steps are necessary. Before planting, put in your mouth one or more little seeds, hold them in your mouth, under the tongue, for at least nine minutes. Then place the seed between the palm of your hands and hold it there for about 30 seconds. During this time, it is important that you be standing barefoot on the spot of the earth where you will be planting it. Open your hands and carefully raise the seed which you are holding to your mouth. Then blow on it lightly, warming it with your breath and the wee little seed will know everything that is within you. Then you need to hold it with your hands, open another 30 seconds, presenting the seed to the celestial bodies, and the seed will determine the moment of its awakening. The planets will all help it. 
and they will give the sprouts the light they need to produce fruit especially for you. After that, you may plant the seed in the ground. In no case should you water it right off so as not to wash away the saliva which is now covering it, along with other information about you that the seed will take in. It can be watered three days after planting. The planting must be done on days appropriate to each vegetable. People already know this from the lunar calendar. In the absence of watering, a premature planting is not as harmful as an overdue planting. It is not a good idea to pull up all the weeds growing in the vicinity of the sprouts. At least one of each kind should be left in place. The weeds can be cut back. According to Anastasia, the seed is thus able to take in information about the person who plants it, and then, during the cultivation of its fruits, will pick up from the universe and the earth the maximum amount of energies needed for a given individual. The weeds should not be disposed of completely, as they have their own appointed function. Some weeds serve to protect the plant from disease, while others give supplemental information. During the cultivation time, it is vital to communicate with the plant, and it is desirable to approach it and touch it during a full moon at least once during its growth period. Anastasia maintains that the fruit cultivated from the seed in this manner and consumed by the individual who cultivated it is capable not only of curing him of all disease of the flesh whatsoever, but also significantly gently retarding the aging process, rescuing him from harmful, harmful habits, tremendously increasing his mental abilities, and giving him a sense of inner peace. The fruit will have the most effective influence when consumed no later than three days after harvesting. The above-mentioned steps should be taken with a variety of plant species in the garden plot. It is, necessarily to, it is necessary to plant a whole bed of cucumbers, tomatoes, etc. In this manner, just a few plants each is enough. The fruit of plants grown like this will be distinguished from other plants of the same species not only in taste. If analyzed, it will be seen that they are also distinct in terms of the substances they contain. When planting the seedlings, it is important to soften the dirt in the excavated hole with one's fingers and bare toes and spit into the hole. Responding to my question, why the feet? Anastasia explained that through perspiration from one's feet comes substances, toxins no doubt, containing information about bodily diseases. This information is taken in by the seedlings. They transmit it to the fruit, which will thus be enabled to counteract diseases. Anastasia recommended walking around the plot barefoot from time to time. What kind of plants should one cultivate? Anastasia replied, the same variety that exists in most garden plots is quite sufficient. Raspberries, currants, gooseberries, cucumbers, tomatoes, wild strawberries, any kind of apple tree, sweet or sour cherries, and flowers would be very good too. It does not make any difference how many plants of each kind there are or how big the area of cultivation is. There are a few definites without which it would be difficult to imagine a full energy microclimate. One of them is sunflowers, at least one plant. There should also be one and a half or two square meters of cereal grains, rye or wheat, for example. And be sure to leave an island of at least two square meters for wild growing herbs, ones that are not planted manually. If you have not left any of them growing around your dacha, you can bring in some turf from the forest and thereby create an island of natural growth. I asked Anastasia if it were necessary to plant these definites directly in the plot, if they were already some wild grow, if there were already some wild growing herbs close by, say just beyond the fence. And this is how she responded: It is not just the variety of plants that is significant, but also how they are planted. The direct communication with them allows them to take in the information they need. I've already told you about one of the methods of planting. This is the basic one. It is essential to infuse the little patch of nature surrounding you with information about yourself. Only then will the healing effect of life-giving support of your body be significantly higher than from the fruit alone. Out in the natural wilds, as you call them, and nature really is not wild, it is just unfamiliar to you, there are a great many plants that can help us cure all, and I mean all existing diseases. These plants have been designed for that purpose. 
the man has lost or almost lost the ability to identify them. And who might they be? They are two monks who have since been canonized. You can read about them in your books. They can be found in many monastery archives. Wait. I told Anastasia that we already have many specialized pharmacies which deal in healing herbs. Just as there are many physicians and medicine men who make a profession out of herb treatments, and she replied, the chief musician is physician, magician, physician, is your own body. Right from the start, it is endowed with the ability to know which herb should be used and when, how to eat and breathe. It is capable of warding off disease even before its outward manifestation, and nobody else can replace your body, for this is your own personal physician given individually to you by God and personal only to you. I'm telling you how to provide it with the opportunity to act beneficially on your behalf. If you make connections with the plants in your garden plot, they will take care of you and cure you. They will make the right diagnosis all by themselves and prepare the most effective medicine, especially designed for you. Who gets stung by bees? In every garden plot, there should be at least one colony of bees. I told Anastasia there are very few people in our society who can communicate with bees. Special training is required and not everyone is successful. But she replied, A lot of what you do to maintain bee colonies just gets in the way. Over the past millennia, there have been only two people on earth who have come close to understanding this unique life form. And who might they be? There are two monks who have since been canonized. You can read about them in your books. They can be found in many monastery archives. Come on now, Anastasia. You read church literature too? Where? When? You don't even have a single book. I have at my disposal a, well, a much more complete method of retrieving information. What kind of method? And you're talking in circles. After all, you promised me you wouldn't resort to any mysticism or fantasy. I shall tell you about it. I shall t even try reach teaching it to you. You will not understand it right away, but it is simple and natural. Well, okay. So how should bees be kept in a garden plot? All you have to do is build the same kind of hive for them they would have under natural conditions, and that is it. After that, your only task remaining is to go to the hive and gather part of the honey wax and other substances they produce that are so useful for man. Anastasia, that's not simple at all. Who knows what the natural hive should look like? Now, if you could tell me how to do it myself with the materials we have at our disposal, then that might be something feasible. All right, she laughed. Then you will have to wait a bit. I need to visualize it. I have to see what people in today's world might have on hand, as you say. And where should it be placed so as not to spoil the view, I added. I shall look into that too. She lay down on the grass as she always did, visualizing her, or rather, our life situations, but this time I began to observe her carefully. As she lay on the grass, her arms were stretched out in different directions. With palms upturned, her fingers were partially curled on their tips. Specifically, the tips of the four fingers on each hand were also positioned so that their soft parts faced upwards. Her fingers first began to stir a little, but then stopped. Her eyes were closed, her body was completely relaxed, her face too appeared relaxed at first, but then a faint shadow of some kind of feeling or sensation moved across it. Later, she explained how seeing at a distance can be practiced by anyone with a particular kind of upbringing. About the beehive, Anastasia had the following to say, you need to make the hive in the shape of a hollow block. You can either take a log with a hole in it and hollow it out to enlarge the cavity, or use boards from the deciduous trees to make a long hollow box 120 120 centimeters long the board should be no less than six centimeters thick and the inside measurements of the cavity at least 40 by 40 centimeters triangle strips should be inserted into the corners where the inner surfaces meet to make the cavity somewhat rounded 
The strips can be just lightly glued in place and the beads themselves will firm them up afterward. One end should be fully and permanently covered with a board of the same thickness with a removable panel on the other end where this panel needs to be cut in such a way so that it fits neatly into the opening and sealed with grass or some kind of cloth covering the whole bottom. Make a slit or a series of slits to provide access for the bees. Along the bottom edge of one of the sides, approximately one and a half centimeters wide, starting 30 centimeters from the removable panel and continuing to the other end. This hive can be set on pillings anywhere in the garden plot at least 20 to 25 centimeters off ground with the slits facing south. It is even better, however, to set it up under the roof of the house. Then people will not interfere with the bees flying out and will not be bothered by them. In this case, the hive should be aligned horizontally at a 20 to 30 degree angle with the opening at the lower end. The hive could even be installed in the attic provided there's proper ventilation or on the roof itself. Best of all though, attach it to the south wall of the house, just under the eaves. The only thing is you need to make sure you have proper access to the hive so you can remove the honeycomb. Otherwise, the hive should stand on a small platform with an overhead canopy to protect it from the sun and can be wrapped with insulation in winter. I remarked to Anastasia that this type of hide could be rather heavy and the platform and canopy might spoil the appearance of the house. What to do in that case? She looked at me a little surprised and then explained, the thing is that your beekeepers do not really go about it the right way. My grandfather told me about this. Beekeepers today have concocted a lot of different ways of constructing a hive, but all of them involve constant human intervention in its operation. They move the honeycomb frames around with the hive, remove both the hive and the bees to a different spot for the winter, and this is something they should not do. Bees build their honeycombs at a specific distance apart to facilitate both ventilation and defense against their enemies, and any human intervention breaks down the system. Instead of spending their time gathering honey and raising offspring, the, bring, the bees are obligated to fix what has been broken. Under natural conditions, bees live in tree hollows and cope with any situation perfectly well on their own. I told you how to keep them under conditions as close to natural ones as possible. Their presence is extremely beneficial. They pollinate all the plants much more effectively than anything else, thereby increasing the yield. But you must know this pretty well already. What you may not know is that bees proboscis open up channels in the plants through which the plants take in supplemental information reflected by the planets. Information the plants and subsequently human beings require. But bees sting people, don't you see? How can somebody get a good rest at a dacha if they're constantly afraid of being stung? Bees only sting when people act aggressively towards them, wave them off, become afraid or irritated inside. Not necessarily at the bees, but just at anyone. The bees feel this and will not tolerate the rays of any dark feelings. Besides, they may attack those parts of the body where there are channels connecting with some diseased internal organ or where their protective aura has been torn and so forth or where the protective aura has been torn, and so forth. You know how effectively bees are already used in treating the diseases you call radiculitis? But that is far from being the only thing they can do. If I were to tell you about everything, especially showing the evidence you're asking for, you would have to spend not just three days, but many weeks with me. There's a lot written about bees in your world. All I have done is introduce a few correctives, but please believe me, they are extremely important correctives. To establish a colony of bees in a hive like this is very easy. Before dumping a swarm of bees into the hive, put in a little chunk of wax and some honey plant. You do not need to put in any handmade frames or cells. Afterward, when there are colonies established on even a few neighboring dodge plots, the bees will multiply all by themselves. Then, as they swarm, they will occupy the empty hives. And how should the honey be gathered? Open the panel, break off the hanging honeycomb, and retrieve the sealed honey and pollen. And do not be greedy. It is important to leave part of it for the bees for the winter. In fact, it is better not to collect honey at all during the first year. <sighs> I hope that sits well with you. Many blessings, blessings, and... 
see you all in the garden in your family settlements aloha <laughs>